Howdy, and welcome to an introductory series on making a game with Bevy 0.8. I've previously made an intro series, but that version of Bevy is starting to get a little outdated and it was in 2D. This time, I'll be making a 3D tower defense game for the tutorial series. All of the principles on how to use Bevy will easily translate over into 2D, and in many ways 3D is the more complex of the two options, so I think this will make for a better learning experience. In this video, we will cover the basic concepts in Bevy at a high level. Things like resources, systems, entities, components, handles, and more. We will then use these to create a basic 3D scene, which we will add gameplay features to in the next episode. I'll be providing all of the assets I use in the code for this tutorial on a GitHub link in the description, so don't be afraid if you can't make 3D models on your own yet. First, let's go for a couple of notes before we jump in. I'm not teaching Rust, but I'll stick to as beginner-friendly Rust as possible for this series. Any basic programming experience should be enough for you to follow along. Also, this tutorial will be mostly vanilla bevy, but I will use a couple of community plugins that I highly recommend. For your own projects, I recommend checking out tons of the exciting plugins in the ecosystem, and I'm working on a showcase series for some of my favorites. Lastly, there are other great resources I recommend while learning bevy. The unofficial cheat book is a great place to learn the basic concepts in Bevy, and I recommend reading it along with this series. The engine itself also comes with a set of examples that will show you with clear code examples how to use every engine feature. Some engine features are a bit more complex than others, so these will cover a whole range of skill levels. Lastly, there's an official Bevy Discord server with a help channel that is really good if you have a specific question. And I also run a Discord server where we're very open to beginner questions and people showing off what they create, and I've put an invite link to that in the description. Alright, so without further ado, let's start making a game. First, create a Rust project using Cargo New. I'm on Linux, but the Rust book can help you get Rust installed and a project created if you're on a different operating system and struggling. Now the first thing we need to do is set up the Cargo Toml with our dependency on Bevy. We want a dependency on Bevy version 0.8, which is the most recent as of this video being published, but I hope the information here is basic enough that it will survive a couple of versions. Now I want to set the optimization levels for the package code to 3, while keeping our code at optimization 1. This comes from the cheat book and will make your games run much faster in debug, at the cost of a longer first compile. All recompiles will still be fast because we don't need to compile package code every time, and our code is still unoptimized. I also recommend the dynamic feature if it works on your machine. There are some problems with it on Windows, but if it works, it can further reduce your recompile time. Also, as a final recommendation, I'd use the mold linker if you're on Linux. All of these combined get my recompile times down to under one second, which is great for game development. If you're struggling to get Bevy set up, then there's an install chapter in the Bevy book on their website which can help you. Now on to the code. I hinted at it earlier, but the goal for this project is to make a 3D tower defense game, but we need to start small first. I'm going to be building a modified version of the Bevy 3D scene official example for this video. The first thing we want to do is add a use statement for the Bevy prelude. This gives us all the basic things we need from Bevy, and I use it in every file in my Bevy projects. Now we need to create a Bevy app and get a window rendering. We do this by calling app new, and then inserting the default plugins and calling run. This will create a window for us and set up many things like input handling, the system schedule, timekeeping, and asset loading. I'm going to wait for a detailed description of what a plugin is for future videos when we create our own, but for now just think of a plugin as a set of functionality you want the app to have. Also notice the app is using the builder pattern and we'll be taking advantage of this for the rest of the video. We start by creating the app, then we add and insert everything we need into the app, and then we run it. This is basically the only statement you'll have in main for many Bevy projects. Now let's customize our window a bit. You can do this by adding a couple of resources before the default plugins, and yes, order does matter when adding things to the app. First, let's insert the clear color resource with the color black. Resources in Bevy are any Rust data structure that there will only be one of in our game. For example, clear color here is a tuple strut containing a color. We could also create an enum and insert it into our game if we wanted. The important thing is, we can't have two different clear colors as resources at the same time. I'll change my color to something a bit softer. Now we can add another resource called Window Descriptor. This sets up many things about the window for us. Specifically, I'm on a tiling window manager, so I want to set resizable to false, 
and fix the width and height of the window to a constant size and aspect ratio. We can also give our window a nice title. Everything else I'll leave as default, but I recommend checking out the Bevy Docs page on Windows Descriptor to see what else can be set. This is the resource that controls things like if vSync is on or not for your game. Now we've had enough of the basic customizations and it's time to write some actual systems for our game. You may have heard that Bevy uses an ECS design for its games. This stands for Entities, Components, and Systems, and is the core way you'll make games in Bevy. First, let's talk about systems. In Bevy, a system is just a simple REST function. No attributes or fancy magic, just a function. But the function parameters must all be things that can be system params. We will cover most of these in the series, but if you use something in the function params that cannot be a parameter to a system, then Bevy will give you an ugly error message, so be careful to double check these when you're having problems. For our first system, let's create a camera for our game. Here, the only parameter we need is commands. Commands lets us spawn or despawn entities, add or remove components to entities, and add and remove resources from the app. Commands are executed at the end of the frame, so anything we queue up here will have a one frame delay, but that usually doesn't matter. So the first command we're going to use is spawn bundle. Now we need to talk about entities and components. In Bevy, an entity is just an ID number that links together many components. Conceptually, we'll think of entities as being the actual things in our game world, but remember the actual entity type is just an ID number and has no data associated to it. So to actually have data associated with our entities, we need components. A component can be any Rust data structure, like a strut or an enum, and we'll create our own in the next video. These hold the actual data for entities in our games. Then, to tie back into what we talked about earlier, systems can query for entities with certain components and use or change that component data to do things in-game, like rendering and moving the player. If this doesn't stick right away, then give it some time. We'll show many examples of this cycle throughout the series, and it's a very powerful way to make games with a plus side of being very performant on the back end. So in our code, when we call spawn bundle, or any spawn function on commands, we are queuing up the creation of an entity and we'll give it a set of components. In Bevy, components can be grouped together into bundles for easy use. It's also important to note that each entity can only have one copy of each component associated with it. So for example, one entity can't have two separate sprites. We'll show how to work around this as we go along though. The bundle we want to spawn is called Camera 3D Bundle, which if we look at the docs, we can see what components this will add for us. The first five here are camera specific and are worth looking into if you want to customize your camera. Then we have Transform and Global Transform, which specify where the camera is. So when we spawn the bundle, we can set any of these components to have custom values. So here, I'm going to position the transform a bit off of 000 and angle it looking toward the origin. Transform is made out of a translation, rotation, and scale, like in most game engines, but we have many helper functions to create and manipulate it. Here I'm using from XYZ, which sets the translation, and then I chain on looking at to set the rotation. Get comfortable with chaining functions like this if you're new to Rust, because people here will love the builder pattern. Everything else for the camera I'll leave as default, and this is our whole spawn camera system. Now we'll see that Cargo is giving us a dead code warning because this system is never used. You need to actually add systems to your app, so always check this when you run your game and it looks like nothing is happening. It's a common problem for me. Since we only want to create the camera once when we launch the game, we'll call add startup system on the app and pass in our system. Don't add parents to the system name. We are literally passing the function into Bevy and telling it to run it one time on startup. If we call add system instead, then this system will run one time per frame every frame and will spawn thousands of cameras. Now when we run the game, it looks exactly the same, but rest assured there's an entity with a camera spawned. Next we want to spawn something for our camera to look at, so let's create another system to spawn a scene. Here let's start with just commands again. Now the bundle I want is the PBR bundle. If you're wondering what bundles are available, then I would check the cheat book page on the topic, which lists all of the built-in Bevy bundles for you. PBR here stands for Physically Based Rendering, and after a bit of indirection, we see that this bundle is a material mesh bundle with the standard material. Here we see the components are a handle to a mesh, a handle to a standard material, the transforms, and the visibility. Visibility and computed visibility are another fundamental pair in Bevy, just like transform and global transform. 
So as our last concept for this video, let's talk about handles. Some things in games are very large, such as images, 3D models, or sounds. Or they can be shared easily between multiple objects, like materials. Bevy handles these problems through an asset system, where Bevy will handle loading and storage of your assets while giving you a lightweight handle to the asset that you can use as a component. The asset system will also handle releasing any assets that have no outstanding handles. So back in our spawning system, let's create a PBR bundle. To get a mesh handle, we need the assets resource of type mesh mutably. This is how we can get a resource in our systems and mutate them. There's also the res keyword, which will give us read-only access. It's good to only get mutable access if you need it, because under the hood, Bevy is trying to run as many systems in parallel as possible and cannot run a system that needs a resource while it's being mutated by another. The assets type is literally just a map from the handles it gives out to the underlying data, and a list of events to track when things are loaded or modified. For now, the only function we need on assets is add, where we'll give it an instance of a mesh. Thankfully, Bevy has some built-in primitives in the shapes crate. Here, I just want a plane of size 5 to be our ground. Next, let's also get the assets of the standard material. The standard material has tons of parameters that can make some beautiful looking things, and we'll load a model from Blender in the next episode, and Bevy will automatically set these values to what we set in the modeling software. For this video though, we'll just use a color, which through into can be converted into a standard material. When we add this to the assets, we'll get the handle back that we need to spawn the PVR bundle. Now I'll leave the transform invisibilities as the default and add this system as a startup system to the app. When I run the game now, I see the green plane that we spawned in. I can follow the same steps, but this time with the cube shape and set its transform to be just above the plane, and now I have a nice looking scene. Now we have three entities in our scene, the camera, the cube, and the plane. The cube and the plane have the exact same sets of components, and the camera only shares the transform and global transform components with them. Next time we'll add a tool to let us see what's in the scene and what components they have. There's a lot more we need to do to turn this into a game, but we needed to cover a lot of the basic concepts in Bevy this video. Don't be afraid if this hasn't settled in yet. Every one of these concepts will show up in each of the future videos, and we'll slowly start to understand how they tie into each other. At this point, if you want to experiment a bit on your own, you can look at the 3D scene example on Bevy's GitHub and add a directional light to the scene, so it's not as dark. Or you could look at the cheap book chapter on 3D models and try loading a model from Blender if you have 3D experience. If you're trying to follow along in making a 2D game, I'd recommend looking at the Bevy example called Sprite. And if you're doing pixel art, I would add the image settings resource to stop Bevy from blurring your artwork. I hope you follow along with this series and give Bevy an honest chance. It's a great engine and has an amazing community. Bevy has an amazing potential to grow into a great game engine, and I'm proud to be around it at this stage in its growth. A link to the GitHub with the code for this tutorial is in the description, and each part will be given a separate GitHub branch for ease of use. Also, there's an invite to my Discord if you want to chat with me and the community of Bevy users I have there. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons. Remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.